All right, we've now been joined by Joey Logano, who finished third in today's NASCAR Cup Series race at Texas Motor Speedway. Joey, we appreciate you joining us. Um, we're going to go ahead and roll straight into questions, and we will take our first question from Jeff Gluck. Jeff, go ahead with your question. Joey and I, we caught a little bit of what you were saying to uh, Tyler there when you first walked up. Did you say that you couldn't believe that they, they were able to stay up there after they didn't take tires? Is that what you are saying? Could not believe it. Could not believe it. I was uh, pretty certain when I was fourth on a little bit newer tires. Well, a lot newer tires. I think they had 50 laps on their tires. And um, I thought, man, they're sitting ducks. I got them. And uh, boy, just on the splitter too hard uh for the first 15 laps and and that's a that's the tough part about texas here you, you know one and two you want the splitter down three and four you're all over the splitter and you're trying to get off it um with the banking and the added load so that was a, a big challenge today for us we were able to um you know kind of get through it the best we could but um not not good enough so uh proud of um what our shell pencil team did today um scoring uh, stage points in the second stage second place and having a shot to win. These 550 races have been super hard uh, for us lately. We've been a little bit off. So uh, glad to have a solid run that we ran up in the front all day and then, uh, you know, have a shot to win. So um, hindsight 2020, what we would have done different to, to try to win it, uh, what those guys did. But man, um, congratulations to them. They, they deserve it. They, they made the right call and, um, and executed the restarts great. So um, we couldn't do anything with them. So how, how do you view it, though, like when you know, obviously it's, we're used to track position being so important, right? But when tires really just don't even wear as a competitor, I mean, how do you, how do you view that situation? Tires too good. Tires way too good. This is the same tire as Kentucky. The tire wears, it, it wears, it wears down to the cords. It does not slow down. Uh, and, and that's, you know, they noticed that and made the calls to do that, uh, which you've seen other people do that throughout the day at times too. So. Um, but the, you know, the, ultimately they made the right call because they, they realized that and, um, the tire is like a, <laughs> it never slows down. You know, heat may affect it here and there. Balance can make you slow down a little bit, but for the most part, once you get clean air, you can run the same speeds as you do early in the run, actually faster because I was stuck on the splitter for 15 laps at, uh, about 20 laps. My car would finally get going. Thank you. Okay, we're going to take our next question from Dustin Albino. Dustin, go ahead. Yeah, Joe, you mentioned how the 550 uh, package has been tough. Uh, just your second top five since the resumption of the season. I'm curious, where would you assess where you're at right now? Um, that was a progress today. Um, you know, I would say we were uh, a little bit of a lost puppy <laughs> before, before the last couple of races, but I thought Kentucky, we showed speed. Once again today, we showed speed. Very similar racetracks, very similar setups, but – um, we showed that we had cars that were capable of winning with the racing areas happening and uh, could run in the top two or three. Um, so that's progress to me um, th that we ran well. Our pit stops have been great. Uh, really, it's just been the speed that we we've been lacking and uh, we've made a good step to where we're in contention to win again, uh, like we were early in the year. So um, you asked me that two weeks ago. I wouldn't even know how to answer it because I don't even know where to start. Um, but now I think we're finding some answers and some clues to start, uh, you know, getting back to what we're used to seeing out of the 22. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, we're going to take our next question from Luis Torres. Go ahead. To follow up what Esa was saying, just if just how this hiatus has been challenging for you guys, especially coming out of there with a Valley and top five is the best effort since you won at Phoenix before the pandemic halted everything. Oh, you, you, you broke up. Oh, I sorry. I, what I was saying to add on to follow up what Dustin said was that how valuable is getting that top three result, especially since it's the best run you've had since before the pandemic halted the action. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's super important. Um, you know, our sport goes in cycles. It goes up, you go down, you go up, you go down. Um, and when you're down, you gotta you gotta fight harder than ever trying to figure out where is it. Um, you know, the first place you look is always inward um, before anywhere else. And then you try to find your weaknesses and then start working on them. Um, you know, whether it's myself or within the team um, all the way through. So uh, I feel like we identified weaknesses 
uh, you know, and, and we've been working on them to get them better. And, and like I said, the, the progress that we've made has been, uh, it feels really good. Um, you know, we're, like I said, we're not there. So it's, it's not, I don't feel like we're all the way back. We weren't the fastest car, the 12 was the fastest today. Um, but we're, we're in the ballpark now. We're, before we're running uh, down lap, you know, in uh, 20th or so. So um, we're closer, we can pass cars, the front end works now, uh, and we're starting to see some reward from that. Thank you. Okay, our next question is going to come from Jeff with Fox 4 Dallas. Jeff? Just so you know, we're going to be doing Hey, Joey, Jeff Kolb with Fox 4. I uh, wanted to just touch on the heat. There was so much talk about that during the race today. How brutal was that, and, and how do you prepare with hydration and training for that, even going into the season? It was hot. I didn't notice. <laughs> I was fine. Um, obviously, it was a little toasty in there, but... Um, you know, we hydrate best possible uh, before the race. We, we train for it um, as much as possible, uh, you know, um, you know, whether it's strength conditioning or uh, heat conditioning as well. Um, you know, a lot of time at the gym and uh, that's, that pays off in days like today. Um, you know, so obviously hydration is key, but uh, also uh, the way you train, I think is, is a big deal. So um, I feel fresh, feel good. Um, you know, that's, that's a good sign. Um, your heart, heart rate was going at the end because I was trying to get everything I can get out of that thing. And you, know, you see the, the trophy sitting in front of you, but um, I was fine. I was good to go. Okay, we're going to take our next question from Dustin Long. Dustin, go ahead. Joey, you referenced uh, how the, the, each season has its own set of cycles, the ups and downs of various teams. And I'm curious from your perspective, with this unusual season, with teams being able to only be at shops at certain times and crew chiefs not always in the in the in the in the shop, how how are the cycles different this year? Is it taking longer to climb back, or is it is it happening quicker because nobody can sustain dominance except for maybe one or two teams? Yeah, it's harder to recover from when you're. When I said lost puppy, I mean that's what we are. That's what we were um, because you don't have a chance to fix anything. Right, you, you get done with the race and you go, well, this, this, and this, so we need to make better on the race car at least. And okay, well, we'll try this, this, and this next week, but it's a different track and we'll just go and race and have no practice and who knows if we're gonna make it better or worse, right? How do you find direction out of that? Uh, that's where practice was so important where you can go out there, you know, A, B, or run. You can make a run, you, you come in, make one change, go back out and say, was that better or worse? Now we're done with the race and we have things we want to fix, but let's go to a track that's nowhere near the same as that we just went to and, uh, and make some changes to our car and tell me if it's better or not. <laughs> you can't, you can't. I mean, you only can tell by just the overall finish, uh, you know, compared to the field. And, and that's what we kind of worked on and it seemed like there was some, some progress made. Is there anything with Kansas? Obviously, this place probably is not going to carry over as much, but does Kentucky in any way, or is, or is Kansas just another example come Thursday night of let's try something and we have no idea what's going to happen until the green flag drops? I mean, it's like that for everybody, right? I mean, the, the car builds you bring from to Texas to Kansas uh, are so different all the way through. Um, you know, you, you don't do anything the same. Um, the, the driving style, the setups, the body, I mean, everything that you – you look at and you say, okay, what do we want to bring um, is different than what you had here at Texas when it's hot out here. So um, it's just, <laughs> like I said, a little bit of practice would be really nice, but it is the same for everybody. Everyone has the same opportunity. You can't get mad about it. It, it is what it is. Uh, and it's proven to put on good races. You know, the races have been exciting and, um, you know, crazy things happening during the end of the races. Sometimes uh, teams are hitting it, others are, are missing it by a mile. And, um, We've been on both sides of it. So, uh, it, like I said, it's, it's working. Um, I just, you know, the teams that aren't really fast like they're used to uh, have a harder time recovering for sure. Thank you. Okay, we're going to take another question now from Randy Kovitz. Randy, go ahead. Randy, can you hear us? Randy. We'll go to Lee Spencer and then come back to Randy. Lee, go ahead. Thank you. To kind of follow up in the direction that, that Dustin was going, after listening to you on the radio and, and Brad on the radio, it just really sounds like 
you know, the first half of the race is, is a glorified practice session where you're trying to get your car dialed in so you can do battle. About what point during the course of the race are you actually feeling comfortable with what you have to work with? Well, you know, you, you saw a track position meant today. Um, so, you know, if you can hit it right off the bat and make small changes, it's a huge advantage. Um, so hard to pass these days. So, uh, especially when there's no fall off in the, in the tires that, you know, the opportunity uh, to pass is, is tough. So, um, you know, when your car's not good, you got to come in and put four tires on. If your car's decent, you can come in, put two on or stay out or fuel only and, and, and do some different strategy plays to get up towards the front. So, you got to have the right balance to get your car close enough unless you're just going to get eaten up on these uh, restarts. So, um, yeah, it's, it's tough, you know. So that's just, the, like I said, it's the world we live in right now. It's tough for everybody. It's not just for race car drivers. It's tough for everybody in their jobs right now. It's always different. So it's a new normal. And, uh, and as long as we're positive and upbeat and uh, realize that there's an opportunity to make, to make uh, us better in the competition, uh, we'll, we'll keep working on it that way with that attitude. And with what you guys are learning, do you do your team meetings, and I mean team as in your teammates, are you guys doing that by Zoom? And what's the normal week kind of looking like for you guys to prepare for a race? And, you know, what would kind of be that Monday meeting after, um, you know, do you, are you guys on Zoom again and then discussing, you know, what you learned throughout the course of the race? Thank you. Yeah, we're able to do, uh, that's a great question. We're able to do a lot over, uh, you know, video chats of, of whatever sort. Um, there, there's so many different ones now, but I got all the apps now on my computer, so I'm good to go, uh, depending on what, what everyone chooses for that day or interviews. But, um, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's surprisingly okay. You know, I, I, I'm usually the person that wants to be in the garage from, open the clothes. I want to be at the shop. I want to go through everything in person and really talk it out because I feel like face to face is, is the best way to communicate and work things out together. Um, and, and that is still the best. Don't get me wrong. I still want to get back to that. But the technology that we have today um, with being able to see each other, you know, an Italian person like me, you got to use your hands to talk a little bit. So uh, the video chat really helps you from that department. <laughs> grazie, grazie. <laughs> Okay, our next question. Um, Randy, can you hear us? Yes, can, can you hear me now? We have you. Go ahead with your Okay, great. Uh, yeah, Joey, just following up on the heat, now you come to Kansas, which is pretty hot in July, too, four nights later. Just what's the mentality for everyone driving, having these races so bunched up in the, in the heat of summer, and even though it will be at night, it's still going to be pretty hot at 630. Uh, it'll be hot, but uh, you're gonna be cooler in today. Being the, the sun being down, so um, you know it, your body. Obviously, I, I joked about it not being hot. Obviously, it's hot, but uh, you know it's it, your body loses so much uh, hydration um, throughout it that you know between now and, and Kansas, you're you're uh, you know just focused on so much on getting uh, electrolytes back in you and um, hydrating, eating uh, correctly. I mean, so much so. Um, you, know, you, you can imagine you're strapped in one of these things for three and a half hours in a sauna and you're not just sitting there, you know, it's, it's sauna temperatures, but you're working. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and there's a uh, also danger that, that keeps that intensity up and that focus in. So, um, you know, it, it's, it's not a, this isn't an easy thing to do. You can't be out of shape and expect to be successful. Uh, especially at the end of these races, you can, you can make it through the first two thirds of the race, but the end when you got to be the freshest you mentally, um, you know, that's where, uh, physically, you need to be ready to go. So um, I look forward to this challenge. I, I look forward to um, being able to uh, put the hard work that I put in during the week to, to use. So um, I, I like that part of, of uh, racing and, you know, the heat of the summer in Texas during the day. Uh, <laughs> it sounds a little crazy, <laughs> to be honest with you, when you look at the temperatures and it's close to 100 degrees and you're like, what are we, what are we doing? Um, but I also uh, kind of like that opportunity to to um, maybe have a leg up. Thank you. Yep. Okay, we're gonna take one final question for Joey from Michael Leslie, go ahead. Joey, apologies if this is uh, playing repeat on an earlier question. I'm not sure if you were asked this already. Um, I know having fans in some of these races is, is uh, starting to become more normal, but this was the first event in the state of Texas to have fans in attendance since COVID uh, kind of took over. 
Um, what, what's it like for you guys to look up and see fans in the grandstands? And, and what do you think about the policy of having fans, welcoming fans into these events? I love it. Um, you know what I'm surprised about? I can't believe because they, they separate everyone quite a bit, obviously, and the, the grandstands here at Texas, there's so many of them. I don't know the numbers of how many were here or, or and how many available seats there is, but it doesn't look full because they're so spread out. But the amount of noise they can still make is pretty cool. Uh, you know, Bristol is obviously a, a lot of energy in that little bowl, um, but even here, as spread out as it is on a mile and a half, um, you know, you can hear the fans, they're yelling at you before the race across from the racetrack, and uh, it's neat to see that support and, uh, and what a, a true you know, NASCAR fan is when, you know, they come to, to the racetrack. Not only is, the, it is a, the, the, I don't know if the word scare or concern, probably concern of COVID-19 is there, but also the heat. I mean, it is hot as you know what out here. And, uh, and they're still coming out to watch our race. So it just shows that how much people love what NASCAR racing is to them. And, uh, and I thank them for that. You know, they don't, like I always say, you don't have to root for the 22, uh, just root for NASCAR. And, and that means a lot to me. And, uh, and we've seen that throughout the, you know, last couple of weeks and, and especially here today, as hot as it was. All right, Joe, we appreciate you spending some time with us and um, we do wish you the best of luck um, later this week in Kansas. We'll talk then. All right, thanks guys, we'll see you soon.